네, 안녕하세요. 서울 뿌리 깊은 치과의 조영진 원장입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. j o y o n g j i n of Seoul Deep Rooted Dental Clinic. Today, I want to talk about implant assisted RPD as part of master course. I'm sure you're very familiar with implant assisted RPD. It can be largely divided into overdenture type and surveyed crown type, which uses implant. Surveyed crown or bridge are utilized here. There are many literature from 1990s to early to mid 2000s. If you take a look, in most cases, the upper is fully dentulous, and in the lower, there is a Kennedy class 1. There is residual teeth in the anterior area only, so in the posterior area, implants are placed, O-ring, locator, magnet, and other attachments are used. So attachments are added to number 6 or 7, the most distal side, and overdenture type of IARPD is provided. IARPD, especially in lower Kennedy class 1 patients, as functional load is applied from the fulcrum line, rotation occurs and there can be many discomforts associated with it. In order to prevent such problems, implants are placed in the posterior area to provide more retention support and stability. That is the beginning of implant-assisted RPD. IARPD can be divided into overdenture type and surveyed crown type. As for overdenture type, depending on whether we are going to provide more support or retention, it can be divided into implant-supported RPD and implant-retained RPD. What we're very used to is a surveyed crown and RPD type. This is the IARPD option, which is done very frequently. IARPD can be applied to various indications, such as fully dentulous case or partial dentulous case. In fully dentulous case, it's either patient with few residual teeth which require extraction or patients with severely resorbed posterior alveolar ridge. In this case, the alveolar ridge would only remain in the anterior area. In a partial edentulous case, it would be Kennedy class 1 or 2 with a distal extension, or it can be patients with unilateral remaining teeth, which requires unilateral RPD. IARPD can also be used for rehabilitation of crossed occlusion situations. For instance, the patient may only have right teeth in the upper and left teeth in the lower. It can also be utilized for stability in long span missing cases. As mentioned in the previous lecture, for fully dentulous patients, you can utilize various options such as removable complete denture implant over denture implant supported FPD and IARPD, or fixed complete denture, or implant supported fixed partial denture. Implant-supported fixed partial denture and IARPD using few number of implants can be an option that can be applied to fully dentulous patients. Let's look at a case. This is a female patient in her 70s as shown. There's teeth from number 5 to 5 and in the posterior area, there's Kennedy class 1 RPD. The patient has been using it for about a decade and in the lower, Partial denture was recently fabricated, but you can see that it was not very favorable and there was a severe mobility, so the patient wanted a new denture in the lower. That was the chief complaint. If you do analysis, if we are to assume that the remaining teeth in the lower are to be extracted, the patient is going to be fully dentulous in the mandible. There are various options to consider, such as complete denture or fixed partial denture using multiple implants. In determining the treatment option, we need to look at the degree of clinical deficiency, whether it's tooth only or gingival contour, or if there's underlying bone loss as well. We need to evaluate interarch distance, patient's physical and medical conditions, patient's desire, and patient's ability to maintain the prosthesis hygiene, as well as financial limitations. We need to take an overall look and then come up with appropriate treatment plan.
In the case of this patient, the patient has been using a removable denture in the upper for 10 years very conveniently, and periodontal treatment was required, but with the periodontal treatment, the patient would be able to use it for long. In the lower, after consultation with the patient, from 5 to 5, four implants were to be placed. 10 unit fixed prosthesis was planned, and in the posterior area, Kennedy class 1 partial denture was planned. The plan was to place four implants between number 5 and 5. The position can be number 5, 3, 3, and 5, or 5, 2, 2, and 5. In the middle, there was significant defect, and because we wanted to avoid GBR, in the case of right side, we decided to place implants in number 5 and 3 on the right, and for the left, avoiding the defect, the implants were planned in number 5 and 2. In order to avoid a bone graft, implant placement positions were determined where pre-existing bone volume existed. Strategic decision was made for implants. US-type implants were placed, and this is after provisional delivery. After healing, implant level impression was taken, jig was used to take a bite record, and VD was determined. Custom abutments were fabricated, and on top, 10 unit cementation type surveyed bridge was fabricated and delivered. Once this is done, the rest of the process is very similar to designing and fabricating partial denture after providing prosthesis to natural teeth or fixed prosthesis. In this case, implants were used in the anterior area between number 5 and 5. The surveyed bridge prosthesis was fabricated. Typical Kennedy Class 1 prototype design was chosen. The correct answer is already in front of us. Bezel rest is positioned and the most distal tooth. Anterior to that, indirect retainer is positioned. On both sides, mechanical retention is positioned. Typical prototype design was formed following the partial denture design order. Following that, partial denture was fabricated. Functional impression was taken, altered cast was made, partial denture was fabricated and delivered after bite registration. In 2018, final prosthesis delivery was done after four years. So this is when the patient came in recently. Recall panoramic image was taken. You can see that adjacent bone tendency is very favorable and the patient was using it without any problems. After periodontal treatment, you can see that there is a slight recession in the upper and compared to that, in the lower, despite it being four years, it is nicely maintained. The vertical space, I've talked about it earlier. In the case of bar over denture, it requires 14 millimeters of space, but in the case of posterior area, this space is very confined. And even if there is a space just enough for fixed implanted prosthesis, you can utilize IARPD. Fixed prosthesis can be provided and abutment can be used, so sufficient depths of rest can be formed and partial denture denture can be delivered. Compared with implant bar over denture, even in limited space, this option can be used more flexibly. As mentioned earlier, IARPD can be divided into over denture type and surveyed crown type. In 2008, Stewart Removable Partial Prosthodontics textbook introduced IARPD, Implant Assisted RPD, for the first time, and since then, a lot of people use the term IARPD. In overseas, over-denture type IARPD are primarily used. So, what is referred to as IARPD in textbook it refers to overdenture type IARPD, but recently in Korea, there has been many cases and literature reported about implant partial denture. If you look at the literature published in Korean, it also refers to surveyed crown type of IARPD, as well as fully edentulous cases in Partial edentulous cases, including Kennedy class 1, 2, 3, and 4, implant assisted overdenture can be utilized. In Kennedy class 1 and 2, you can see these kind of vast areas. 
The implants are positioned apart from each other and utilizing the superior attachments and implants, you can get the stability of the denture. It's the same with Kennedy class 4 and Kennedy class 3 if there is long span missing area in order to remove clasp. Right distal to the mesial abutment, implant can be used and IARPD can be used for aesthetic purposes like this. Combination therapy using implant and RPD can provide support retention stability and aesthetics. Also, in cases where it's difficult to utilize natural teeth as abutment, you can use implants for that purposes. So you can preserve natural teeth. You can make treatment more simple, for instance, you can remove modification space, you can make complicated RPD design more simple. Third transitional phase, before moving on to fixed implant prosthesis, this can be used in the interim period, so you can be more flexible in providing treatment. Strategically, we do not have to place implant prosthesis in all areas, and you can just place them in the desired area. Therefore, the level of technique required in surgery can be reduced. Compared with when implant fixed prosthesis is used solely, you can use fewer number of implants, so financially it can be more favorable. Let's look at another case. This is 83-year-old male patient. The patient's chief complaint was that there was a lot of mobility in his teeth and the patient wanted the new dentures. The patient wanted mobile teeth to be extracted. As you can see, the prosthesis in the anterior area was very mobile. The teeth in the posterior area required extraction due to poor perio condition. And here, because of root carriers, extraction was required here after extraction in the upper. Left, there were only two teeth, and as for the lower, from canine to canine, the residual teeth showed extreme wear. So these were the only available teeth. Without additional implant placement, then it will be classic crossed occlusion. Because there was very limited available bone in the posterior area, implant placement would have been extremely difficult. And there was a severe attrition. There was concern of combination syndrome because there was anterior teeth in the lower but none in the upper. It was very uncomfortable for the patient to use. Whenever the patient chewed, the teeth showed unstable movement. In order to get maximum effect with minimum number of implants, in the case of upper, with the help of insurance, two implants were to be placed in the upper right. In order to make a vertical stop in number two and four, two implants were to be placed. A survey the bridge was planned and IARPD was planned as well. In the case of lower, there were areas where there were insufficient amount of bone. Yes, there was insufficient amount of bone in the post posterior area, but short implants were placed to each. The plan was to do over denture type implant to RPD. In the upper, teeth were extracted, implants were placed, GBR was done, and uh, while we were waiting for a healing, in the lower, in number seven, short implants were placed to each, and in the anterior area, prosthodontic treatment was proceeded. As we were waiting for upper to heal, in the lower, it was Kennedy class one. In posterior seven and seven, implants were placed so Kennedy class 1 implant over denture type IARPD that worked as functional Kennedy class 3 was fabricated. Magnetic attachments were used in the posterior area. After that, from number 12 to 4, implant surveyed bridge was made and using a natural tooth and implant abutment, Kennedy class 1 modification 1 partial denture was fabricated as shown. By making denture like this, between upper and lower right, natural teeth and implants were utilized to create stop. 
in the posterior area in number seven and seven implant and magnet attachments were used for iarpd this changed the linear support to a square support which covered a vast posterior area although it is kinetic class one but functionally it's more favorable and closer to class three occlusal force would be distributed in that way in the case of upper if treatment proceeded as is in number 24 and 25 cross occlusion was bound to occur in order to prevent that in the upper right the implant prosthesis was delivered and this was done to get bilateral support to make occlusal contact on both sides, implant prosthesis and IARPD was utilized. In the case of lower, implants were placed in number 7 and 7 to get uh, bilateral posterior support. The short implants were placed each. The available bone was really limited and uh, the amount of vertical support was very limited. Yes, I could have done surveyed crown with long clinical crown, but it would have led to unfavorable crown to implant ratio and the pericondition was not really good in the anterior area. So I, in order to overcome such risk, I planned for overdenture type prosthesis. Overdenture type IARPD was delivered in the lower. As shown in partial edentulous cases, there are many advantages by using implant-assisted RPD. Ultimately, we can get bilateral occlusal support and occlusal contact can be made on both sides, and this is very important. When there's teeth unilaterally, by adding implants, unilateral linear support was changed to bilateral support and three Point support was changed to square support after adding implant in the posterior area. In this way, occlusal contacts can be made more favorable. And this is the biggest benefit of implant-assisted RPD in partial edentulous cases. By doing this, you can preserve a residual natural teeth and provide more protection. Ultimately, it improves the functionality of the partial denture used by the patient, so it's an upgrade. Today, I talked about how implant-assisted RPD can be utilized for fully edentulous cases and partial edentulous cases in the form of overdenture type or surveyed crown type. I primarily focused on sharing some cases. Implant-assisted RPD is frequently utilized in different dental clinics. So basically, we place the implants and deliver prosthesis. In the end, the partial denture is the ultimate result. And we need to stick to the basics in fabricating partial denture. We need to bear in mind the basic knowledge that is required for fabricating removable partial denture in order to provide a good prognosis for implant and implant-assisted partial denture. This is the end of my lecture. If you come to offline course, you'll be able to access more details. I look forward to your interest. Thank you for watching.